Hey, Pat, <laughs> welcome to our, our chat. <laughs> <laughs> This is this is everything that I want. Um, um, it's good to see you, Pat. It's so good to see you guys. Um, it's so good to see you guys. I uh, uh, I just got to say, like, first off, thanks so much for coming in. Oh, wait, I should do the thing where I say, uh, welcome, Vi Hart and Marion Call. Uh, ev everyone, I kind of assume that if you know who I am, like you must know who these guys are, and by oh the, these folks are. I'm kind of trying Not to get away from guys. Yeah, uh, who these who these folks are, um, and so I can do an introduction of y'all, or you could briefly introduce yourself just to say what you want to say about yourself. Uh, it's up to you. Want me to do it, or would you like to do it quickly yourself? Well, depending on how quick we want to be, maybe we can do some origin stories. That's always a good one Ooh, because like we knew who, who each other were before world builders, but that was the first time we connected. And it's it's a, a fun bit of lore for those of you. Actually, yes. I don't, I can't see a chat. I don't really know. How, do you have a chat where you'll keep us up to date if people are making comments? Or oh, whatever? yeah. Yep. I, I, I've got okay. that over here. Okay, great. I like origin stories. Yeah. Like, are they real or made up origin stories? Oh, we could do one of each and people have to guess. I like one ah, of each. All right. All right. Uh, this is exciting. Uh, who wants to start? <clears throat> I remember uh, there was sushi. There was very, very good sushi in uh, San Francisco underneath an overpass. And Vihart and I had met before in an entertainment context, but I was passing through San Francisco and thought on a whim, wouldn't it be fun to sit and talk all night about art with Vihart? And uh, she said yes. And so we had the best sushi that I still, I think, have ever had in my life. Many good things have begun over sushi, and this was one of them. And we went to a bar that sold drinks organized by Pantone color. And, and we drew on the paper tablecloth at length. And uh, then we decided that I should come live with you and you should come live with me. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's and that, story one. <laughs> that much of the story is true. And I, I had recently moved to the Bay Area and I just gotten like my fancy tech job. And I'm like, I can afford good sushi. I can afford going to a bar that has Pantone color drinks. <laughs> So it was one of those things where like when you're when you're uh, hosting someone visiting a place, you get to do all the fun things that you might not do every day when you're there yourself. It's a lot of fun. Although here we can do a little true or fake and Marion help fill in the details and the audience can guess, uh, is this a true or fake origin story? Uh, the first time we met had to do with jousting. True. Had to do with. No, no, wait, wait, wait. I, 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 I want to guess. I want to guess. Okay. You oh, can, yes. You <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, you've already done jousting. So do another one, yeah. then I'll guess. Okay. Yes. Yeah, sorry. I didn't mean to. I didn't know how the game worked yet, but I'm getting the hang of it. <laughs> okay, Marin, your turn. Fill in the next uh, bit of the story, and Pat will guess true or false. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, okay. All right. After the jousting, um, let's see. There, uh, the real things keep crowding in here. It's hard to true or false them. Um, oh, after the jousting, there was some bicycling involved. <sighs> oh, see, I, oh, mm, that's a very good one. False. You are correct. Yeah, You're see, I wild. knew you were trying also, to sucker I'm me. Not good at this game. You made that <laughs> plausible. Yeah. You made that plausible, but. Too plausible. Yeah. Yep. But the jousting itself, it wasn't, you know, on horseback with with jousters. It it with was jousters. Um, you know the joust what what do you call the jousting I, thing? I just it's a jouster. It was, I agree. It's and, a jouster. Yeah, but well the jouster um Albert, were, or a, or a, were actually a... people. We were doing human jousting where where yes. the jousters were themselves jousters. Yes, we, we, we threw people in a pool mm -hmm. at one another. I don't remember pool. how we happened on this game. Actually, I've heard of this. It is true. Well, they were, they were people. One of them was named uh, Pike and the other was named Lance. Um, yeah, there were two, two very friendly guys. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I want to know how you two met. 
So, um, I, I like the idea, like, can I, let's tell the story and then we'll start to, we'll go back and forth and we'll add details, which may or may not. And then like, then you, Marion, you can guess if the details are true. Very well. Okay. I'm not going to be good at this, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> and it's to fill in Pat, was the human jousting true or false? I, um... That one, I mean, true? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I met Vi, she was a lance coming right at me. <laughs> I Hurled I by some lance. unremembered uh, sea monkey. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh. I weighed a little bit less back then. It, was, it may have been easier. but Oh, you can joust with anyone in a pool. That's why pools are great. So. That's true. Um. Uh, so, um, I, here's how I remember it. And like this, I, I honestly, then Vi, you will have to say if this is true or not, because <laughs> Lord knows, but somebody told me that they knew Vi Hart and I'm like, can you please introduce me to Vi Hart? because like I'm such a huge fan, but also can you make it so that I sound cool instead of like just a fanboy? <laughs> and they're like, cool, I can do you an introduction. Uh, hold on, let's tie it to the fundraiser. Uh, I believe a dumpster just blew over. I'm oh, sorry. No, I'm so- Do continue. I'm thank <laughs> please do keep giving us updates. And also if things get real bad, can you just text me and let me know if you need help or if, and, or if you're alive. What help would you send? I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. More whiskey. Um, no, things are good. Things yeah. are good. Just if the, if the power cuts out, then okay. um, I will text you okay. and tell you that I'm fine and that no trees have fallen on me. Okay. And no bears have eaten me. <laughs> okay. Um, also, I think, Hundred Year Storm is a great way just to describe 2020 in general. Oh um, yeah. <laughs> um. So okay, how about this? I was, uh, I was trying to do a charity thing, and so I said, "Oh, for a charity thing, introduce me to Vi Hart," and then they introduced me to Vi Hart, and I'm like, "Hey, um, uh, you seem like a cool person. Do you want to do a charity thing?" And then she said. Pshaw, I already do charity. In fact, I've done your charity. Uh, Marion, true or false? You did the looking up into the corner of your eyes thing. I feel like some part of that was not true, but I'm not sure which part. Uh, there is a lie embedded in those truths somewhere. Pshaw. <laughs> you didn't say pshaw. Actually. You, you would say pshaw. You would totally say pshaw. <laughs> Um, I don't remember if I said Pashaw. I we we could check the email logs, but actually I think that was all the way true. At least really? <laughs> in in terms of paraphrase, I did that that was the excuse I had for reaching out that I could be like, "Hey, do you want to do a charity thing instead of just like, "Oh god, you're cool. Could I please talk to you?" Um <laughs> And I got to have the same excuse. I was like, oh, yes, I already know about you, not because I'm a fan or anything, because of your charity. I know you for your charity work. <laughs> that, yes. Well. Uh, what, what I do remember, actually, not that it's seared into my memory or anything, but uh, it was we, we had bounced emails back and forth and... And I'm like, so I do a little thing called World Builders. And I kind of did the quick elevator pitch in the email. And she's like, yeah, I've won a book in it. Uh, I, 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 I won a book and it's on my desk. It's actually your book that I won. And, uh, um, and I was like, huh, okay, maybe I can relax a little bit. Maybe I have a little bit of leeway in this conversation. I'm not going to blow it just right out of the gate. Do um, you feel like you've relaxed all the way yet? Ha! At this point, yeah. At this point, as much as I ever do in any social situation. Um, um, Me too. You Me know, too. we've utterly failed to describe what any of us do. Oh, we like, really have, haven't we? Um, I think I have that book. All right, 
I'm going to come back with a book. I'm Wait, Vi, you headphones. go away and we'll describe you and then it won't be uncomfortable for you. Oh, yeah. Oh, and, okay, then, yeah. Yeah, and then when yeah. you just tell me when to put my headphones back on and I will come back with the book. I'm not sure if I have the book, but if I, I'll come back with a book and then you can guess if it's the book. Oh. <laughs> We're post certainty here. <laughs> so, this is a post positive realist world we're in now. <laughs> okay, Marion, you go first. Uh, describe Vi. Uh, uh, Vi Hart has a mathematical and musical mind, which are exceptional and pairs that with a gift to communicate. And she has used that over several years to communicate mathematical, musical, and social truths to people um, using a. a, a Fabulous integration of all of the arts. I, Pat, your turn. I'm too slow. No, that's okay. Uh, Vi, <laughs> Vi can listen to this. Uh, Vi, uh, in addition to everything Marion just said, Vi uh, has an ability to experience, promote, and and uh, uh, and evoke joy um that i have rarely seen equaled and that i myself would w wish i could emulate to her degree um um uh my my boys i i showed them videos of your stuff like ages ago um and and as well as playing them some of like the songs uh unattached to your youtube stuff um like the one about the snails one about the ice cream cones and the boys they would just sing it you know which like there's no higher praise than like a child will hear it once and they're just like i'm in and it's all mine and i'm singing it forever so oh, i love that oh yeah. that's my favorite thing yeah because i'm a i'm a professionally trained musician i'm a composer like uh i mean i mean now for my job i'm a mathematician data person but my degree is in music and like that's still where my heart is. And so that makes me very happy. Yep. That's, uh, that's what I want. Yep. But I also will say anybody, if you just go tooling around on the, uh, on the world builders YouTube page, it is, I remember you said it was the yellow cover one. That's from Galantz. Uh, that's from my <laughs> British publisher. Um, they they donated those that year and yeah that means you came in very early there was no fake in that well, i did and this wasn't the first year i was involved i think the first year that i i watched it all i couldn't afford to donate i was like you know bank account under a hundred dollars kind of love part of my life but i really enjoyed watching it and participating in you know just just the whole joy of it and i just remember it being such such a lovely event and just like this glimmer of happiness and that like every day it would be this new exciting thing and all and and i was like all right once i get a job someday i'm going to be able to donate to this and then i could and then i got this book and i actually have won prizes other years too it's like there's a lot of prizes <laughs> so if, for you watching at home you you really do have a very good shot of winning some stuff if you donate to world builders if you're new if you've donated in the past you probably already know this I really like I I'm sorry, I'm just gonna I'm no, gonna do. put on my pledge drive hat here real quick because I'm a I, I go in and pitch for my local NPR station every pledge drive because I'm not because we survive. <laughs> a lot of us like musicians and crowdfunding folks, like that's how we survive. But it's very nice to actually get to not be pledge driving for myself, but instead for world builders for once. So I just wanna mention, yeah, there's prizes and stuff, but also um, supporting food sustainability is around the world there are so many freaking causes right now there is so much to give money to do it today any day um this is one of the great ones there are some cool prizes i'm very excited about it um and also if you're watching and you're in a less than hundred dollar bank account situation um we're super happy you're here because i think all of us have been at that point yes uh, and could be again at any time. So it's, yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm just super excited y'all are here. And I do want to encourage you to make a pledge to World Builders. Or um, if you're not in a good money situation, there are ways you can volunteer, spread the word, um, and pester people to come hang out with us over the next several days. Okay, pledge drive hat off. I know that's dull, but I care about it a lot. So. Oh, you'll you'll see me. I the the hat <laughs> the hat kind of always 
it's sort of like a crown. Like technically I can <laughs> I can take off the physical crown, but the king never truly removes the crown. I'm always on the hustle for world builders. Um but uh um yeah, I'll also say uh you can really trust Vi in terms of like are there a good chance to win prizes? Is there is or are there chance or chances to win prize or prizes? Um, uh, I'm pretty sure that that now has to be safe grammatically. Vi, uh, you did not, all the subjects and all the verbs. They're fine. <laughs> not only uh, has uh, uh, you know has Vi won things, which that's anecdotal. That's not science, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Vi. Science. Uh, math science, like number science. Um, but Vi, one year, I was like, okay, everyone, I did the math. I know how many people have donated. I, it's For every $10 you kick in, you get a chance to win. Here, listen to my pitch here. Hey, everyone, for every $10 you donate uh, anywhere in the fundraiser, you're eligible to win uh, one of our more than 2,500 different prizes including three different tables from wormwood books games just a ton of fabulous geeky stuff we're adding more all the time but all told it's worth more than a hundred thousand dollars signed books rare books out of print books or games and so there that was the the hustle but and it's it's all true this year um but i was on my blog and i'm like hey everyone i did the math if you donate ten dollars that means you have like, and I did the math, it was like seven a 7% chance of winning something. And I'm like, that's nuts. Like 7% chance for like one ticket in this, in this prize draw. I go, that's a lot. And I'm like, that means if you donate like $100, then you're, it's like 10 times. So that's 70% chance of winning something. <laughs> And see, even Marion is laughing at me now. And I'm like, but that means if it's if you donate $200, you have a 140% chance of winning something. <laughs> and 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 I I actually first first off I thought that, second I wrote it, then third I went, yep, and then posted the blog. <laughs> and then people in the comments are like, Pat, we told you. Like, I mean, you can't do more than 100% of a thing. You can't have more than a 100% chance. And I'm like, eh, well, I mean, in, a, in one sense, you're probably right. But in a more meaningful sense, I'm right. Because what this really represents is your chance of winning more than one prize. Which I would say, you're pretty much guaranteed to win one. And maybe 40% chance to win two. Um, and they're like, Pat, no. And I'm like, but I pretty much, pretty much, you know, I took some statistics once. And what I learned about statistics is that when you give the answer, there's a little, there's, you put a sigma by it. And the sigma means eh, uh, pretty much. I mean, that's, that's the most we know about numbers. <laughs> and then... Vi, I think, and then people are like, for real though, you look like a fucking idiot, Rothfuss. And I'm like, fine. And I went and talked, I went to talk to a, a, a math doer, like a like at the university. And I'm That's like- That's what we call them, math doers. And I'm like, hey, so you do statistics and probability and stuff, right? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, cool. Like- and I, I said, lay it out for me. And they explained, and they're like, actually, what you're doing is you're not adding the chances of winning. You're removing the chances of losing. And I'm like, that sounds dumb as fuck and wrong. And they're like, ha ha, yep. That's why, <laughs> that's why people suck at playing cards and everyone makes bad choices in life is because your brain can't calculate odds. And I'm like, hmm. And so then I reached out to Vi and I'm like, hey, I shit my pants real bad online. And nobody trusts me anymore. And they think I'm an idiot. (laughs) Can you maybe come in and because you do good math, can you lend me some of your credibility to regain all of which I have torn up and thrown away? Please tell me you guys had like a live math teach in. (laughs) (laughs) 
actually what happened was a truly beautiful thing that I regret has sort of been lost from web pages past. Vi provided the math on the back end and we had a little widget that updated in real time based on how many prizes we had and how many donations we had. And she could say, I've donated this much. And then uh, it would say, you've got a 73% chance of winning a thing. And it had Vi's little triangle on it. And I think it it was like, <laughs> I did a math. And uh, <laughs> And it was so it was. great. I think that may be what it actually said. Yeah, like we we used it for that. years, uh, and it was so great. But like we're and I hope to bring it back for next year. There just wasn't time for this year. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, true or false? Yes, that was a true story. Um, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We did. I'm gonna go refill my tea. And okay. Good. Now we get to introduce. Can... Oh yeah, we'll do Marion. <laughs> oh. So I first met Mary, yeah, it was in this jousting situation, um, but she was performing, doing, you know, her professional music thing she does. And I was just so impressed, not not just by her artistic ability, but also just how, how she handled herself with crowds of fans and just or organizing things to make everyone included and kind of fill up the space of this event with lovely things that people could be a part of. Um, and at that point, I was in a stage in my career where like all the people and stuff was a little bit overwhelming. And I, you know, in the math world, it, it was usually very academic, the uh, talks I'd be giving. And, and like that other culture of concerts where people are there to be fans and not there to be smart and do math and then ask questions and criticize you and <laughs> you know, like academics. Um, I just, you know, she, she, she was a real role model there for me. And I very much, it, she was like, I, this, this person, I need to, I need to know more about this person. I need to learn all her wisdoms. Uh, for me, I, I was aware of her. I was aware of her in the community but like sort of Beep, time's up. <laughs> oh, that's fair. Um, but actually here I, I'll, I'll share. And this actually worked out with perfect symmetry. Like you both left and you each finished talking about each other right as you came back. And then I'm like, I don't care. I'll, I'll say it to your face. Um, <laughs> you're awesome. You're awesome. And I love you. And, um, <clears throat> but uh, I think um, I, I kind of, I knew her name. I knew Marion's name. I knew that she did music. She was one of the people who was respected by the people I respected musically. But like, weird as it sounds, like I don't seek out a lot of music. I am, I, I, I engage in music that is around me and then occasionally I obsess and then I do all of some music. Um, and... I was maybe just cameoing into a Paul and Storm show. Yes, I believe it was at a Woodstock. It's oh now see Woodstock would have been the first place we were like in each other's like mm -hmm. like proximity. Yes, but the one that I really but like Woodstock also my first several I was <laughs> like eighty five eighty nine percent of my brain was purely devoted to like fucking being like not freaking out around all the cool Don't nerds freak out. And oh yeah tell me about i accidentally got trapped between you georgia or martin and neil gaiman backstage <laughs> and couldn't quite extract myself from the conversation and i was just like what am i doing here this is very weird and i have to get my makeup on because i'm one of the first acts and this is very strange i know which so, one that was I you know remember which, one, which one, was. one that was very good well, no no i i only because there was only one that had uh the three oh, yeah. of us there um but i uh where I remember, uh, because like at Woodstock, uh, I only got in because somebody gave, uh, you know, somebody had 15 minutes on stage and they reached out to me. They're like, hey, I'm good for seven minutes. I'm only good on stage for seven minutes. Do you want half my time at <laughs> Woodstock? And I'm like, if they're cool with it, sure. What's Woodstock? And then I look at it and I'm like, oh shit, every cool person. <laughs> And so I showed up, I did a brief funny thing, and like Will Wheaton was just like chilling backstage. 
And I, the only thing I know about being a professional is that like, if you see someone who's famous, I don't know what I should do, but I know what I shouldn't do, which is to go up to them and say, holy shit, you're awesome. I love your stuff. Well, I mean, that's not terrible, but you, it, that means you're not a professional colleague and especially backstage at a performance. So like I went out, I did my type five, which for Pat Rothfuss is eight, nine minutes. And then uh, I walked back and Will was like, and he was laughing. He's like, that was great. And I'm like, cool, thanks. And then I left. But my first two entire Wootstocks were just like trying not to look at any of the real cool people. <laughs> so they would know that yeah. I wasn't just trying to like claw at their eyes. But uh, we actually, I remember us at a couple San Diego's, uh, like not at Wootstock, but in the days after, kind of bonding over that, over feeling like we're at this amazing thing and we're kind of at the kids table. Um, and like, not really, there isn't really a kids table, but there's definitely like a, a circle of people you try not to disturb. Yeah. Even if you're in close proximity, cause they get disturbed enough at a thing like San Diego. And so we wound up like kind of walking around the convention together and hanging out at the beach and the restaurants and stuff and, yep. and just yelling about art. <laughs> but the time where you really showed up in my brain was after it was some show, but it wasn't a Wootstock. Um, and, and and maybe it was that I knew you. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you're one of the people at Wootstock. But, like, honestly, at Wootstock, I don't watch a lot of the show because I'm, I, I'm yeah, hanging out backstage. Yeah, you're backstage hanging out with people. Yeah. And so, but I remember, and I'm like, yeah, Marion Call, she does music. I know her. Like, she does music. I, I know other people that do music. They do music. But at this show... I had wandered out and either I'd done my thing or maybe I wasn't doing anything at that show at all. And I was in the audience and you came out to do your bit and you did it. And I'm like, Oh, hold on. Wait, Holy shit. Um, and I'm like, I, I mean, cause I know like the double clicks and Molly Lewis and like, there's all these people that do like fun, cool music, but like you came out and it was, it was it was different. It wasn't fun or cool. You know, that, no, nope. that's the joke. <laughs> nope. And what it was is you came out and you did something and I'm like, like, there's some, there's some fucking words here. Like, like, I think it was, <laughs> uh, and I, but I remember being like, why have I been so dumb as to not actually seek out this person's art before? <laughs> Um, and so like, that's, that was sort of my moment where I'm like, I gotta look at their stuff. Um, uh, so, um, and since then, uh, you know, fast forward forever and Marion is the person who, uh, now watch, here's where we get to the point of the stream 25 minutes in, uh, we're not oh. the, the exclusive point of the stream, but you know, Marion's the person I brought in to help coordinate, uh, uh, the tunes from Temerant or the Aeolian mixtape, depending on how we want to think of it. It's the musical yeah. anthology that I've always kind of dreamed about. Marion has been working behind the scenes to wrangle the cats and coordinate yeah. things and actually make it happen. Early on in the coordinating and wrangling thing, because we were kind of waiting uh, on some other projects, but I'm hoping that we get to kind of bump this ahead in the next year. It'd be very exciting. Yeah. <laughs> So, in fact, we may have a, a little sneak preview. So, I don't know if this video is going to make it in time to be a World Builders uh, Act of Whimsy video because I just sent over the footage recently. Um, but Marion and I did a, a, a rehearsal um, when Marion was visiting me last year, and we recorded it. And and this video. Oh, it's in. It's in. It's in. Oh, <laughs> oh. Do we know what what that stretch goal? Is? All right. So, no spoilers then, but. Spoil not, spoil not, my friend. And yeah. so, yeah, like, uh, we're, uh, that's one thing that we haven't sort of codified yet is, um, you know, what, what stretch goals we will have and where we're putting them exactly. Partly it was that we we're organizing this big lead off stream. We wanted to get together and talk about cool things with cool people. Um, but, you know, that, it's it there's a lot of moving pieces and uh and also we didn't want to like lay out a ton of stretch goals right on the first day 
and then either blow by everything because the theme yeah. is something to look <laughs> forward to. And we want everyone to be like, ooh, I'm excited to see this mm. stuff. But also, like, what if we set out the stretch goals and maybe our first day wasn't so good? <laughs> and so, and it's like at a million dollars and it's like, so never, right? Um, yeah. Well, I'm glad that that's probably making it in because that is a collaboration between the three of us, actually. And like, if we were a Venn diagram, I'm the music circle. I don't, I'm not good at words. Um, Pat is very good at words. He's word circle. And Marin is somehow good at both. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, from time to time. You're, uh, you're very good had- at both. We had a lot of fun recording it, though. I, I am excited. There will be many more, many, many more things to record. That was early out the gate, but I'm excited to make more. I, I uh, in reading the story, I, not to not to go back to book stuff, but um, <laughs> one of the things that caught me about um, the book when I first read it, I think I met you first, and I was like, oh, I guess I should read this dude's book. Um, <laughs> and uh, it was, um, no, actually, my husband read it first and was like, Hey, we met this guy and I read his book and you need to read his book. And yeah, so, so thank my husband, other Pat. Um, but, uh, I, the, the experiences of being in like, like Hogwarts, but starving kind of like the way that school actually is was, I was like, I have not seen this experience represented very often though. Like trying to financially survive a school where everyone else has money because that was very much my experience in high school and college just like people going off on their big spring break to Cancun and I was like trying to figure out how to eat and um then the other experience is the Aeolian is very much true to my particular musical background but at, like my parents were both performing musicians the Adema Rue felt really real to me they would go from place to place they would play we had to be skilled in every form of entertainment we had they would play a funeral and then a high religious service and then a wedding and then a a profane party where they wrote dirty words for things and we just kind (laughs) of had to be willing to roll with it all and I was just a little kid growing up in this and then I grew up and did literally the same thing traveling you know 50 states and running around sleeping in my car just doing the wandering entertainer thing because it's so great it's so great and I uh so the alien was uh, a space that kind of resonated for me as something that I see music and fiction a lot I don't see what it's like to be a musician in fiction a lot. Um, and so, uh, so good imagining. <laughs> you know, I, it's, that warms my heart to like, uh, in a whole different way. Um, you know, and in here, somebody in the chat just said it, Hogwarts, but starving. Um, <laughs> and I'm like, and you said that and I'm like, you literally, you just set a record for best description of the book, <laughs> least words. Um, you know, like the other that might, might, might now it's been bumped down to second place, um, is, is the description of slow regard, which is, I don't know if you ever heard this Vi, but, uh, the description of slow regard was, um, come, sad girl picks things up and puts them down again. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, it's, that's a mood though. That's a 2020 mood. Huh? <laughs> That's what that, I was spending my days doing. Instead. Yeah, I told you, you were ahead of your time. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, I'd like to thank everyone. Uh, thanks, Wormwood. They just dropped a, a raid on us. Welcome, Word Wormwood people. Um, and actually, since the Wormwood folks just showed up, um, forgive me. We're, we're about halfway through. It's time for a commercial break anyway. Uh, and Wormwood folks, stick around uh, because we have the fabulous Vihart and Marion Call here for another half hour. And but first, I want to talk to you about charity. And but <laughs> sorry, this but is the background music, right? But but but, yeah. but 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 more importantly than wait, I, I don't need charity background music. I need I need something that's sort of evocative of uh, beautiful furniture. Is there such a thing as beautiful furniture music? Um, oh no, I was joking, and now she's going to do a thing. Uh, this is. I'm. This is so cool, but I don't know how to cope with it. Okay, stop. <laughs> no, 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 no! Don't stop it! Don't stop it! It's really cool. I, I'll cope. I'll cope. Um, uh, because like, in, in in my heart, I think if I could wish for something, it would be to have sort of appropriate theme music wherever I was. So oh, like you I don't know if I can do that yet. No no I'm no still, no no I'm brand new at this. Like <laughs> this is as close as I've ever been. So um 
Okay, so is this good? Oh, that's so good. good. Uh, pitching music. Yeah, keep keep doing that, and I'm gonna I'm gonna riff. You know, sometimes in the heartland, I, <laughs> I, Schmucker's jam is made by people who love jam. <laughs> I'm sorry. I I uh, it it feels a little bit like you would have a very sincere voiceover to this music and so I'm obliged to super sincere it. No, I'm getting I'm getting way too metafictional. This, this can be this can be uh, sardonic. You can you can um, you jam, can make jam. fun of a serious jam. thing too. Yeah. Jam, 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 jam. The heartland. <laughs> <laughs> You're making me laugh too hard to play guitar. <laughs> oh, oh! <laughs> what was your pitch? This I, is important. It was so <laughs> much. Okay, that was. I gotta tell you, like, that's probably gonna be my favorite part of the stream. I don't want to like cast dispersions at anyone that I have lined up to come on later, but that was. That was. You may have many favorite parts. There's no need for unnecessary hierarchy. That there. was. You thank you, but no, that <laughs> that was a a beautiful moment that I will remember literally forever. Um, but now before we lose uh, the Wormwood people, because I I am laughing hysterically and sound kind of crazy. Hey, Wormwood people, did you know that if you donate to the charity right now, the charity being Heifer International. Uh, which for 75 years has been improving the lives of people all over the world, um, through World Builders, which is the charity that I accidentally started, uh, despite being mostly an idiot, you can win so much cool shit. Uh, books, games, but most importantly, you can win one of three Wormwood tables um, uh, that you can so design to your own specifications. And with this in mind, I'm going to quickly, uh, if I can, not screw up my OBS, I'm going to do, uh, let's try to go here. Oh, we're, we're, hey, we're all three in the corner. It's going great. And now we're going to bring open this page. And, and it's also there. There's OBS and the page. Sorry, I kind of have to talk it through. And so now let's go to the Wormwood page here. And everyone, uh, we are giving away, uh, for every $10 you donate to World Builders, 100% of that money will go on to Heifer International. But every $10 gets you a chance to win all of the stuff in our prize lottery, including this year, Wormwood has donated not just one table, but three different tables. And like eventually we'll have some fancy graphics that show like what these different tables look like. But here's the secret. And because you're here on the stream, I'm gonna tell you the truth. The truth is it doesn't matter what graphics we use because these tables will be changed according to your desire so that you can create the table that lives in your most secret heart, the table that you loved before you were born. For example, here, let's say, let's say that you kind of live in a small place. And so what you want is this little, it's called the Lilliput. This is a little coffee table. Now, and you see there, there's a little vault. You can play a little game in there. And then there's this beautiful topper. The bottom of this is made out of black walnut, ethically sourced wood, handcrafted here in America by people who know what the fuck they're doing. Wormwood makes beautiful furniture that will last for a hundred years. They do not fuck about. And so, and then you're like, I could have a black walnut topper on there too. Cause that that's nice. But you know, like let's go fucking ham. What's this, Paduk? I didn't know there was a wood called Paduk. It's red. What the shit? The world is full of magic. And there you go. Kabam. There is your most beautiful ever table of your heart 
coffee table. Or maybe you're like, when am I ever, I don't drink coffee. No, which I mean, of course you drink coffee, but you don't use a coffee table um, because I don't know, you don't live in the 1950s. So instead you're like, actually here, I want this table. Um, I And also black walnut, sure, if you're basic, um, but instead, I'm all I'm all up on that cherry wood, baby. Cherry wood? That's right. This table cherry as fuck. Forest green felt. That's right. I'm a madman. And then on the top, yeah, Paduke. But instead, let's have that purple heart. Ooh, that purple heart. A wood that sounds like it comes from a fantasy world, but actually comes from this world. Look at that beautiful table. You just made it. You just you just decided and you're like, yeah. That's this is living in my house. Um, for every ten dollars you donate, you have a chance to win any one of these three tables. Now, again, they're going to be sort of striated. You know, they're going to be like a, a a littler coffee table, or like a cash value equivalent, cash store credit. Do whatever you want with it. Then there's going to be a medium table, right? And then there's going to be the Papa Bear table. We're not going to refer to them in those terms, despite the fact that it would be very funny. Um, and uh, But then you can do with the cash equivalent whatever you want and say, for example, instead of this small one, let's say like you live in a Viking meat hall. You want this large table that seats eight to ten people. And you're like, yeah, thank you. I am Beowulf. Um, also, I'm going to change this so that the legs are higher. It's like a countertop table. That's right. Look at me. I'm so tall because I'm a Viking. And then cherry wood. Well, we're too, way too rough for that around here. Wenge. Why? Because, I mean, I hope I'm pronouncing it right as wenge. Royal at blue um, felt in the vault. Look at that, folks. That is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And then... What do we do for the topper? You know, you could do a wench topper too. That's elegant and sophisticated. But like, maybe, mm, no, maybe there. Maybe, maybe this, this? Espresso maple? There's so many options. And here's the thing, folks. I could, I could, I could bring this to fruition for you. I could solve this. I could, I could sort of finish this table for you. But the truth is, like, I don't want to rob you of the, like, ability to come in here and play with this. Make make the table of your dreams and know that for every 10 bucks you kick in, you have a chance of winning, um, a chance to get this table shipped straight to your house, um, as well as all the other books and games and other fantastic stuff. And right now, all donations are... Um, all donations are doubled because we have matching money from the Humble Bundle community. So, uh, uh, that, I mean, if you kick in $30, um, that means uh, it's enough money for a family to get, say, hives of honeybees. Heifer goes in, they work with the community, they give them training, tools, education, to have honeybees. And you're like, why the fuck would people in the world want honeybees? Because most of the people in the world actually like eat out of their gardens all year and that's how they survive. And if you give them honeybees, they get cash crops of honey and wax that they can sell for income to buy things they need like medicine or clothes. But also suddenly their gardens are producing between two and three times as much food because their stuff is getting pollinated the way it should and also all their neighbors benefit. Maybe Heifer goes in and for $20, uh, it's chickens. And then that family raises chickens and those chickens produce eggs. And that means every day their children get to eat like what is referred to by uh, like a lot of uh, uh, people who do food science as the perfect protein. Uh, the protein in eggs is, uh, it's, it's the most dense, uh, nutritionally beneficial type of protein that kind of exists. 
and uh, their children get access to that protein every day. They can sell the extra eggs for a source of income. Also, spoiler alert, eggs turn into more chickens and then chickens make more eggs. And then suddenly you have like this avalanche of good moving endlessly into the future. And you've given somebody a small business that gives birth to other small businesses and also feeds you and your children. Imagine children getting to eat every day and imagine parents being able to go to sleep at night and not worry about how they're going to provide for their children. And if that thought makes you happy and you wish you could be a part of it, you can right now by dropping some money on this fundraiser, Humble Bundle Community is going to double that and you can win cool stuff. But wait, there's more. If you come in and do this, you will feel good. And right now, that is actually what I am offering you. The world sucks. 2020 is a garbage fire in a tire fire. We are all exhausted. I guarantee 85% of humanity is actively traumatized by this point. We are dealing with climate change and fascism. And if you hug someone, you could die. And we don't know how to fix it. You don't know how to fix it. You feel helpless and powerless. You're angry all the time. The world sucks and you just wish you could do something and you can't. And that makes it hard to sleep at night. I get it. I live there every minute of every day. But if you come in here, you can't fix everything. Sorry to, sorry to break it to you. I've had to come to grips with it myself. Come in, put a little money in this fundraiser. Let's be serious. Put a lot of money in this fundraiser. I guarantee you will immediately feel good because you will know that you have helped to make the world a better place. There are things that we can't change and there are things that we can. And this is somewhere that you can help. So if you want to help, that's what we're doing. I've got the door open for you. Come on in, win cool shit, fix the world, feel better. Money back guarantee. If you donate to my fundraiser, you don't immediately feel good in your heart. Send me an email through the mods and I will give you your money back. Uh, the money will stay on the fundraiser. I personally, Pat Rothfuss, will refund your money. Um, done. Plug over. Um, there. Uh, there. I'm done. Uh, I forgot we what we were talking an about. Ending j jingle for you, uh, Marion. If you can just go ahead and play that same thing on the guitar you were playing. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, just keep going with that. Right. Did that, you write a uh, song while I was ranting? The, yeah. This might be out of phase for people, but uh, I, I will. will yeah, you just, you just play that. I'll just go. I'll trust go, that you are don't suddenly keeping go your own into tempo. weird chord patterns or anything. Um, uh, I will not. Keep your yeah. own tempo. And uh, yeah, Pat, I stole your words. Oh, easy. great. <laughs> Table in my secret heart of ethically sourced purple hearts. Wormwood tables, the table of your dreams. Your donation will be doubled for an avalanche of good moving into the future where everyone feels good and everyone has these. <sighs> I uh, uh that was very distracting. <laughs> I <was> fun. <laughs> I uh, I have missed making music with other humans. Incidentally, like it's very you, making music alone for months is. Uh, I mean, because Zoom presents its challenges, but <laughs> you did all right. Mm -hmm. I. I a world where everyone has bees. A world where everyone has bees. I want that t-shirt. Uh, I want that. I want that world. I, yes. Pollinators. All pollinators. Bats are important pollinators, too. And so are moths, and so are bees that don't have hives. And we love our pollinators, and we can take care of them. Oh, no. I I feel like I, I just started writing a children's book 
called The Bees Without Hives. Tell me it has a happy ending. Is that okay that those bees don't have hives? Yeah, many, many, many bees do not have hives, and they are happy, and they're important. They just kind of they do their own thing. There are lots of kinds of bees. My, my stepfather's a naturalist, and he's written a lot of books about science and animals. Hmm. Um, and yes, there are many pollinating bees that are not like the hivey thing we mostly learn about. They just they live on their own, and they do their own thing. So yeah, the bees without hives don't have to be sad bees. We do not need to, we do not need to project a narrative onto them. They can own their own story. I increasingly want to write this book where it's like, <laughs> I, I feel like I've been fucking sucked in by Big Hive. And I want to write a story about like, oh, no, like a little kid who's like, but this bee doesn't have a hive. And it's like, oh, no, sweetie, it's OK. There's lots of kind of bees you can have. You can be in a hive, and those bees <laughs> like being in a hive, and there's other bees. They just like to bees chill capitalism. out. Capitalism. We know all about the hive bees because they're <laughs> useful to us. But bees can exist in their own right and be useful to themselves. Yeah. And that is enough. There's there's <laughs> the bees that are like, they just want to hang out by themselves and watch Netflix, and that's fine. That's a good life child <laughs> choice. There's the bees that, you know, they have like a smaller hive. You know, it's like they're sort of heteronormative, but that's fine. Those bees, there's just two of them living together. That's a good life, too, for bees. Um, I'm making up types of bees now. <laughs> you're making up stuff. You're going to hear from all the science folks now. <laughs> this, is, this is a... So am uh, I. I hope I got this right. But. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I mean, you can have poly bees. It's like a hive, but it's a little... I mean, they make choices. They talk a lot. These bees, poly bees, they really... I mean, they know how to have uh, a discussion. Looking forward to this kid's book. I'll have, <laughs> have to connect you with a few entomologists to get you... Uh, yeah. Anyway. Um, instead of the birds and the bees, we're gonna have a book about the bats and the bees. Um, oh, I would read that. Yeah. yeah. Um, we have cute little bats here, and there was a daytime bat flying around, just back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, eating mosquitoes, and I was appreciating him greatly for doing that kind yeah. of work. It was so cute. I've never seen a bat in the daylight for so long but he was a nice busy little friend and i this is what quarantine does to my brain is make me think that that's a story that's interesting to tell but it is is the thing it's just there he was cute and fat and fuzzy and we named him sir roger baddington the third oh no that's great i one of uh, one of uh, here i'll tell i'll tell my bat story i <laughs> was out and about and well, actually i have two bat stories but i'll only tell one he lied um the uh i was out walking around and i saw what looked like a little lump of mold on the side of a building and i'm like huh mold we're not kind of that wet here to like get mold growing on brickwork and then i realized it was a tiny bat that uh it had like maybe i don't know been partying out way too late and it didn't get home before it got bright out and that poor bat he was like fuck it's bright i'm just gonna i'm just gonna like right here on this little brick window ledge and he like hunkered down to it just like a fuzzy lump and i was like oh bat i wish i could take care of you and um and then i i wanted to like pick him up and put him somewhere like safe and cool because it was a hot day out and i didn't because i was afraid because he was a wild animal and for a long time i viewed that as an ethical failing until later in my life when I learned other things about bats. And then it's like the end part one. And I maybe I won't tell the second part of half of that story. Um, so we can talk about other things. you got a lot of streaming to do still. you got to save the bat part two. Yeah. For... Now that's a stretch goal. <laughs> well, only, you hear that? You hear the bat thing? Wow. We're at 146,000. Uh, and it's still our first day, folks. Gosh, this is a great one. Um, so how about this? I'm, I am not going to tell that second half because I do want to hear sort of more, like I want to hear Marion talk a little bit about what we have coming up. Uh, the theme of this year's fundraiser is something to look forward to. Something to look forward to. And, and so having worked on this musical anthology for a while, I'm like, hey, can we like do something? And I, I pinged Marion like, on a ridiculously short time frame. And I'm like, do you think some people might want to show off a little bit of an early version of some of their songs? We've got, uh, we, we have less early versions of songs at this point because we have some of the stuff that is 
recorded is final final and we don't want to show that yet and then other the stuff is just barely getting started and we're kind of everybody's all in different places but um i am excited about the prospect of hearing uh an early cut from by heart although that won't be too much yeah i, I won't spoil that uh we well, did actually get... actually an early an early cut of of what of a rehearsal of a piece that Vi wrote for a previous World Builders Reward. Uh, am I supposed to give it away now? I think we can share it. Like, we can okay. share a little bit. Yeah. Well, Vi, you should tell us a little bit about it. It's your song. <laughs> yeah. So those of you who have uh, listened in years past may remember Macromand. And there is, like, a very initial kind of recording I just made myself. So Pat wrote the words. This is um, a collaboration where because not i'm not really a word smith um that is word wordsmith See, i don't even know that much um so pat wrote the words and and he he had sent them to me um for maybe this is this is what you first got in contact with me about back back when we first met um i was like i have i have these words and he sent them to me and i read it and i could immediately just hear what it sounded like that's just a, a problem in my brain I've always had when reading <laughs> anything that's supposed to be a song is I hear it in my head. And so I'm like, oh yeah, I know what this sounds like. It'll, it'll be fine. Um, and so so I had kind of made just a multi-track recording myself doing it. Um, but this past, uh, last summer, uh, Marion came to visit and we made uh, we worked on recording like a, a much better version. And with Marion, who is a professional wonderful singer and she helped coach me and how to sound a little bit better in a recording as well which was actually a really great experience for me because I don't have like professional singer training so I don't know a lot of this stuff so it's it's actually a really great um even just this rehearsal recording video like we sound so good together <laughs> and Pat it's a hard are so good. fun piece and it's like it's difficult and it's fun and you have to count and you have to like it's it it my I'm a I'm a like composition music student uh by training and like I, I have to reactivate all these parts of my brain that have gone dormant in years of just like popular songwriting stuff I was like oh god oh no mixed meters and things it was really fun and um it's like a hand clapping sort of uh uh like a folk game song that feels really authentic and interesting to me and then it kind of it spirals off into wildness in a fun way so performing it live is a trip and like it's i i feel like there will be uh girls and women's choirs and and uh, not sorry didn't mean to describe gender for no particular reason that was unnecessary working on it no uh, actually actually but, i'll say choirs and performers who like will want to learn this because it's like a challenging game to unravel it's really really fun and i'll say so, i think that is actually fair in this case uh this is uh you know in, at least in set in the world it's it's absolutely a song it's one of the few songs that i i actually heard part of it in my head um, and it's it is described as being a duet between two women, sort of a um, and it's because uh, and just to share it's it's Knackerman Knackerman and for those of you that I mean although I I guarantee in this particular chat everyone's like oh a Knackerman the person who comes and collects dead animals in a city it is a <laughs> valuable job and of course I know about it because I read goddamn fantasy novels why do you think I'm on your stream Pat. Um, so, um, you know, writing music in a book that's about music is, is tricky if you don't understand music or write music or perform music. But in some ways, it's easier maybe for me because I am not tethered to the reality of music. I get to write about the way I think music should be or the way that I can assume that it is. And what is startling to me is apparently I think I like I, I'm I'm not good at a lot of things. I'm good at words and I'm good at uh, extrapolating from known things into unknown things. And uh, I think with music, I always wrote about how it seemed to me like music should be. Um, and it's so flattering that people who do music, like early on, so many people, I, I could have pitched myself as like a hidden secret musician 
who is like, whatever, I should have answered, I should have lied in every interview I did, where they're like, finally, you can, like a musician writing about music in a way that makes sense. And I could have been like, well, you know, you don't practice for 30 years every day, learning every instrument and creating your own instruments by hand without learning a thing or two about how music touches the human heart. And I could have just lied for it. And everyone's like, I can't wait till Rothfuss's album drops. Uh, uh, and so I don't know about these things, but with this song, I would always hear it. Uh, but it's about, uh, it's sort of like a tragic love. I want to say a threnody. What's a threnody, Marion? You go to school for this stuff. Is that a type of music? Threnody? Threnody. I, th I don't know. That's a it's word that, that came into my head. Give me a sec. I'm going to Google yeah, it. I know it's been used to describe um, kind of like a requiem, but that's what's coming to my mind. But it's in that category because I know there's there's some famous pieces that are threnody for, threnody of. So I have a question about this piece. Is I it nailed it. Is it tragedy it. or is it like, a, 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 is it murderous? Is it? It's. Is it, uh, Threnody, I just looked it up, everyone. Uh, it means, technically, a lament, uh, which is perfect. It is a, a, a lamentory song. Um, it's, I don't know, I, I always am kind of happy when I use a word, it comes into my head, and then I'm like, what does it mean, though? Um, <laughs> um, well, I would, I, it's funny because I feel, uh, there's a long tradition of working songs and uh and like it feels like a working song it feels like you're beating laundry or something to it um and but there's such a long tradition of working songs that when you get down to it are really uh like really sad or really dark and you don't notice it first like I, I feel like so many folk songs i i enjoy like real folk folk songs not the not what we consider that today when you get back into it like they're super dark and and but they don't feel like it they feel like a work song or they feel like a you know a, say, a, a sea shanty and it's it's fun to get into it and realize oh shit this is what it's saying so when you hear knackerman you got to listen to the words carefully yeah yeah i wrote i wrote this one to be and and that's happened i'm pretty sure to all of us where you listen to it you're like you're like i love this song and you even can sing it and then one day years later you're like hold on what <laughs> um you're like wait is this like and in in a weird way in high school this happened one of my friends came to me like looking really disturbed and bummed out and apparently his dad had just like kind of like sat him down but instead of having like a, a stereotypical talk and he was sort of like trying to have a moment with his son he goes hey you know uh the doors love me two times is really about having sex and then getting oral sex and and my friend came to me and he's like i i can i don't know if i can ever go home and look at my dad in the face again because he has told me this thing about this song that first i never wanted to know and second i don't want to have ever had this conversation with my father um uh but uh but yeah i uh i think in this one I, I built it up to have a couple of different layers of meeting and and it's it was such a it was it was so exciting to have the thought of somebody actually turning it into a song. Um, that presented an interesting compositional challenge because of the way you'd written it, it's supposed to loop. So you have basically, you know, four verses to the song. And usually like this is a acapella duet for two women. And so just keeping it interesting once through for four repeating verses. Um, and, and wanting to listen to that and not get bored because it repeats four times, but then to like start to get the context and have it turn dark and like really juicy and good, uh, the whole thing needs to repeat at least once. And like you really need it to repeat twice. Um, and then I end on the first verse again. So we end up having to repeat the same like basic melody thing 13 times and acapella voice, two people. Uh, and so to write that in a way that like, it's just awesome all the way through. You want to listen. It's compelling. Like it's bringing you along. And every every time it repeats is not an exact repeat, but is bringing a little something new, a little extra, little mm -hmm. little gritty bit in there that's gonna mess you up. And like, just having it be such a joy to to sing together, to perform, to practice, and to listen to uh, for for something that's essentially repeating the same melody thirteen times a cappella. 
um, that was a compositional challenge. And uh, it's I, like you know, playing Hades, but a song. <laughs> yeah. There we go. I want that as the tagline. Uh, uh, yeah. And it gets that hard. Like you have to have some very high level play. Uh, I <laughs> to do Hades, to do the hard know. bits. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. I had to get coaching you did not make to it beat easy. Hades. I had to have. <laughs> yeah, I, I legit was like, you know, this. I, I asked my brother to like. I'm like, can you just watch me play and like help coach me through this? Because I'm having a trouble getting past getting up to 16 heat, and so. <laughs> anyway, we won't we won't go into that. But <laughs> but then I did. So I'm at 20 heat. <laughs> So, uh, and now I got to play Hades. I've heard about it, but I, I haven't tried it yet. The so, fan art's amazing. Like people are, people, people are going with this, the relationships and the stories. And it's, it's awesome. Ooh, it's fun. I haven't seen, oh, Maren, one last music related Hades duet related question. <laughs> Do you, every time you have heard one or the other of the, the voices sing the other one up until no spoilers, but. Every time I play that game and someone is singing one half of the thing, I, I just can't help it but sing the other part. Yes, true. Yeah. Always. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And when there are both parts, sometimes I make up a harmony and and yeah, you can't yeah. can't get can't resist. Yep. Can't yep. resist. Yeah. I, mean, I also obviously. sing along with the the don't starve themes, and I sing along with the I, I sing along with all the music. I mean, it's just yeah. Oh, I want to I want a game with you, Marion. Well, let's game. I want a let's game. Play games. Uh, I mean, I'm a very boring gamer. You don't want a game with me, actually. I play, I play defensively, and I don't attack things, and I just like make a little fire and, and huddle by it instead of playing the game. But well, it's maybe an expression of <laughs> my desire of something to look forward to for 2020. Uh, it's just like, let's not fight. Let's let's have a fire and make some food. Oh, hold on, uh, hold on, hold on. My phone just lit up. My phone just lit up, uh, which means I might be screwing something up on my stream. Oh, it is it is oh, time. No, hold on. It's Molly Lewis, one of my what? other favorite people. What? And she oh my God. just all caps me saying all caps no punctuation. Pat, you should play Hades. Yes. <laughs> yes. So apparently Molly is watching Molly. the stream. <laughs> If you oh if that's at all a genre you ever play or enjoy, it is just perfection in that like everything is done so well. It's yeah, it's so uh i i'm gonna say uh i i i i just it, it, i i just want to hang out with you guys and chat and more and talk <laughs> about stories and music and uh make up lies about our history together and but i did get the ping that said from aaron and he's like hey pat i'm here to ruin everything <laughs> no aaron you're doing your job and i appreciate it and i love you but Good job, Aaron. I did I did slot this time for um I'll I'll answer writing advice and uh and I even said I would uh do book three questions. So <gasps> Yeah, I know. Wow, people and, are gonna want all right, we better jump off. I was gonna say yeah. you don't you don't wanna be around here. For this. I don't wanna get in the way of that. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I feel, there's, I feel a virtual stampede um, coming on. <laughs> uh, folks, thank you so so much uh, for 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 coming and hanging out and just doing things with me. It's it's such an improvement to my life. I I really appreciate you, uh, just in every way. It's well, so good so to much. see you both. <laughs> yeah, thanks for making this space and this time for us to have this chat because it's it can be tough without an excuse sometimes for us all to get together yeah mm -hmm. let's do it again and yell about art sometime yay yeah. um yeah. i like i like yeah. that as a i like that as a stretch goal uh pat <laughs> pat marion and vi yell about art we'll just get on mm -hmm. for another hour's worth of stream and just make some noise um also we could just do it as a podcast no i i, I always want to start a podcast you and i keep I've... having ideas yeah you're right. a white dude Resist the Resist podcast. the urge oh. to do a podcast. I know. I know. Uh, also, I just gave Aaron palpitations when I said, let's start a podcast. <laughs> well, uh, let us get out of your hair so you can answer questions. But it's good to see you. I'll see you again. I'm, I'm, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to be pestering you again once or twice during the fundraiser. Yay. So. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye.